Hey guys, Chris here again with Project Nerf, and today we're going to take a look at the drop-in regulator repair and upgrade kit from Jay's Black Tech on Etsy. Let's do it. So we've got this drop-in regulator repair and upgrade kit, and I did something a little bit different with this video, guys. I've gone on ahead, I've already installed the kit, and I'm not going to do a full install. I'm just going to show you the key points and kind of narrate over top of it what you need to know. But uh, ultimately, it's a very easy kit to install, and I think you guys will like it. So uh, let's take a look at some of the other video, and then I'll come back with my conclusions. Alright, we've uh, we cracked this open. Uh, a couple things about the uh, the regulator that are really, really good. All the screws in the body are the same size. Okay, except for the two that hold the rear cap on for the uh, stock. So, and they're noticeably smaller. All the rest of them are the same. Um, so, we've got to start taking some stuff out of here. Obviously, uh, this little rear sling mount, you can kind of just lift that uh, rail up and get that out of there. There we go. We need that gone. Um, we're going to cut the power leads here because uh, we're not going to need those anymore. Um, we're going to convert this to LiPo, so obviously we don't need the stock battery. And then right here, hopefully it shows on camera, there's a little nub that kind of holds the thermistor down. Just chip that off, okay, and now you've separated your regulator halves. So, uh, just set this aside here. Well, there are some screws that hold this main section in, which we need to take out because we have to replace these photo eyes. So, um, uh, I did take the screws out of the handle. You might get away with not, um, but if you open the handle up, it makes it a little bit easier to get in here at the trigger and whatnot, which probably makes it a little easier to get in here at the selector switch. So this one, it's got a long wire on it, is going to go around to the back side and replace this. Now these, there's two little gray tabs, you can kind of spread them out and just lift the LED piece out of there. Uh, take your time with it, don't rush it, uh, don't fight it. Uh, they do come out reasonably easy. Pull it out of the wire retainer, feed it around through there. All right, our new one, again, which is the long wire one, is going to drop in to that hole just like this, into the stock retainer, and then there we go. So that's there. We're going to flip it over and get this one out as well. Hard on that, but that's okay. Get that out. Break them out of the stock wire retainer. Here we go. We've got one that goes on here. Bend this back. There we go. That's okay. That's okay. Now, okay. On your connector board here, and I realize you're not going to be able to see super good. Sorry, I can't get the camera any closer. Okay. The battery positive is the far outside post. Okay, so if you're if you're looking at the board like we are, battery positive, far left, and battery negative right beside it. Okay, the next two are for the flywheel motors. Okay, and just like I showed you when we were taking it apart, the yellow and brown. Okay, coming back off your flywheel cage. So, yellow wire, left side, brown wire, right side. Okay, the next are the uh, is the trigger switch okay which is up inside the thing okay and those wires are black with a yellow tracer and yellow okay so that particular set goes black wire with the yellow tracer to the left side okay and then the yellow wire coming off of that switch okay and you just like I said you put them in and you take your screwdriver, stick it in the lug, and you tighten those down. 
Okay, and make sure, check each wire and make sure that it's in there good and snug. Okay, and then the far right side of it over here is the uh, switch uh, for, for your rev trigger. Okay, and you put those in there like that. So, now I know what you're thinking immediately. Uh, Chris, where does the pusher motor go? Okay, well that's where, once you've got everything else wired up, you have to flip the board over and you would screw it in place. So let me see if I got a couple little screws here, at least one. There we go. All right, so we've got our one screw in the board. Okay, the pusher motor screws into this, uh, this green jobber right here. Okay, white would be towards the front of the blaster. So it's going to go in right there. Again, you're going to put your screwdriver in right here on the top. Run that little set screw down until the wire is tight, even though that didn't draw up. That's kind of disconcerting. Let me see if I can. There we go. Got that. And then the green would be in the, if you're looking at the board from the top, the right hand side or towards the rear of the mechanism. So it's going to go right in here. And we're going to stick our screwdriver in here, make sure that's loose. There we go. Stick it in. Push it all the way in there, far as we can get it to go. Go and put our screwdriver back in it. Tighten that little lug till it's tight. There we go. There we go. Okay, so in theory, we should be able to go ahead and hook a battery into it and uh, and test it. I've already done my XT60. So let's uh, let's grab a battery here and see if anything uh, if it goes. So we're gonna go ahead and. Plug a lipo up. Hopefully, uh, so we're gonna set this that, that way. That should be uh, semi-auto. All right, the flywheels are going. We had to put our mag in, so. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and unhook the battery at this point and kind of drop everything back together and see because I'm having a hard time working uh, trying to work and hold everything uh, still with just one hand so yes it did did we run out of ammo yes we did okay so the uh, ammo counter deal still works in it. Uh, okay. And the mag's in there. All right. We're showing 7.1 volts and in zero here on this. So maybe that's an ammo counter. I don't know. Let's see. We've got it set for semi-auto. It's showing one. Okay, so which is what we fired. Now it's a two. Yes, it is. It's an ammo counter or a shots fired counter, which is kind of cool. All right, let's set it to burst. Well, that should be that one. Uh, we should get three out of her this time. Oh, yeah. Holy crap, I'm not junk off of my thing but that's all right and lastly full auto it has kept track of the five shots we fired so oh wow nice uh, I'm very pleased with that let's go ahead and button this thing up guys and uh, yes
guys. Hope you liked that. Uh, I know it wasn't a full install video, but it really is a pretty simple kit to drop in. You open your blaster up, clip all the wires off of the original circuit board. Just clip them all off, get rid of the old board, pull out the old photo eyes. Then insert your new photo eyes and install the wires in your new board in the order that I showed you in the video. It's pretty simple. Uh, Duh, depending on what battery source you use, I do have uh, one thing that they didn't mention uh, for you guys. It's a little tidbit that I think is going to help you out. If you're going to do like we did and convert to a 3S LiPo, okay, on the back side of your cage coming off of your flywheel cage, there's two wires. There's a yellow wire that runs all the way up to the board, and there's a blue wire that runs into a thermistor with a brown wire coming off that plugs up to the board. Okay, you're gonna do a 3S LiPo, you're gonna burn out that thermistor. So, cut the little blue wire off the thermistor and the brown wire off the thermistor and connect them together. You're gonna bypass that so that your 3S LiPo doesn't heat that thermistor and it shut down your flywheels. Okay, you could probably get away with it on a 2S. Certainly on stock batteries, uh, that's not gonna be a problem. But if you're gonna go to 3S, you're gonna wanna bypass that thermistor. Very, very easy. And the only soldering you'll have to do, aside from your battery connector, I use the Next T60, as I always do, for a light bulb. Ultimately, uh, what do I think of the kit? Well, uh, I was ultimately really, really pleased with it. Uh, it works well. Now, you saw our chrono numbers, guys. Uh, we did upgrade the motors and flywheels in this blaster, okay? I put a set of Out of Darts Valkyrie motors in it and a set of Out of Darts Insutanto flywheels. I was hoping for a middle one-teens blaster, something that I can go to any game, do HVZ, and that's exactly what we got. Uh, since we're running 3S LiPo, there's no need in leaving the stock motors in the cage uh, because you're going to burn those out pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, they're not designed to handle that voltage. The pusher motor, it's a bigger, more robust motor. It doesn't run near as much. That's going to hold up for you for a while. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend changing that immediately. But if you can do 3S, go ahead and put a set of 3S motors uh, in your cage. Um, but our 114 chrono average, super happy with that. Uh, as you saw in the video, uh, 7.5 darts per second is phenomenal for a regulator, guys. Without a motor swap, that's awesome and that's my butter range i love that for a full auto rate of fire uh ayo it's great uh i really uh like our little uh counter deal that's on the back of this thing here uh and the orange isn't quite a dead match uh, for the 3d printed piece but it's pretty close uh, i'm not gonna fuss about that too much um objectively speaking the kit does exactly what it's advertised to do so my overall opinion is Funny enough, kind of a mixed one. Mechanically speaking, could not be happier with it. It does its job. Um, but from an objective point of view, it's advertised as a repair kit, so uh, you have to consider this. The kit with shipping costs $40. So if you had one of the regulators, uh, and I've heard stories about them, right, where you pull the rev trigger and the conveyor automatically goes, right, they're messed up, you know, one of the MOSFETs in the board isn't working, whatever. Um, you could buy this kit and drop it in and it would repair your regulator, but for $40, you could buy a brand new regulator. So as a repair item, uh, I'm going to have to say I'd pass on it. I'd rather have a brand new blaster with the extra two mags and all the extra accessories for the same money. Uh, if you're just going to repair it to stock. Uh, however, if you're going to upgrade your blaster, uh, is it worth it? Well, uh, you saw me drop it in, go straight to a 3S, and with just a motor swap, okay, you can get really, really nice performance out of the blaster uh, in really, really uh, very short period of time. So I'm going to have to say that it's, uh, yeah, it's well worth it as an upgrade. If you're going to go on ahead and upgrade your flywheel motors, uh, and even your flywheels or a flywheel cage as well, if you want to, while you're in there, sure, it's going to make your life a little easier. Um Objectively, you guys have seen, or at least hopefully you've seen my regulator mod guide, you know well, basically I accomplish the same thing by just using a buck or a step-down transformer and splitting the circuit, so I wire in my new flywheels and uh, flywheel cage, almost as you would a strife with a big micro switch and a handle, and then use the step-down transformer off of the battery as well, back into the board at stock voltage to preserve all the rest of the stock features. Uh, and that would save you a few dollars, but it's a little more work. 
Uh, and if you're not careful, you can burn out the board um, if you don't set your buck right. Uh, this is a little more foolproof. So again, as an upgrade, if you're going to go ahead and do your motors and flywheels, uh, yeah, I'd have to say, sure, throw it in there. Uh, it's not that expensive. It's easy to install. You get the advantage of the little shots fired counter, uh, and uh, which I really, really like. And uh, there's just not much more to say, guys. It's uh, As a repair, I'd pass. Just buy a brand new one. For upgrading, sure. Throw this bad boy in there, and uh, I, I think you'll be very, very pleased with it. Uh, remember, if you're going to go 3S, bypass that thermistor, and, uh, you know, you guys let me know what you think. Till next time, this is Chris for Project Nerf saying, have a blast.